Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson presents Searching for Bigfoot, Part 1. Mike Vamelon, a 32-year-old EMT, firefighter, and graphic designer, is a full-time Bigfoot researcher, producer, and lead investigator from Northwest New Jersey. He first got into Bigfooting in 2011 on an expedition in North Florida where he and a friend experienced rocks being thrown at them while sitting around a campfire. Since then, he has made it his personal goal to find out exactly what is roaming the woods of America. In 2016, after becoming frustrated with the lack of true research expedition shows on TV, he created his own show called In the Shadow of Big Red Eye. The show is currently filming their fifth season. In 2018, Mike also created a docu-series called Squatchables, which was created for people who are just getting into Bigfooting, sort of a Bigfooting 101. With a passion for Bigfooting, and a history in video editing, I decided to make the first real show about what expeditions are truly about. You'll see raw, uncut footage of what Bigfooting actually is. There is one thing I hope people gain from this show is for families and friends to get off the couch and outside into nature to explore what this amazing world has to offer, says Mike. Hello and welcome to Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson. Me, I'm your host, Daniel Jackson. Today we have a special guest on our show today. Um, I don't want to call you a hunter, Mike, because I don't think that's the right uh, term to use. I think you are more or less uh, an investigator or uh, more uh, of an explorer. Uh, that's what I think. Uh, what for me watching your shows, that's what I think you are. I don't want to call you a hunter because I don't because hunters are out there to to harm things. I don't think you're you're about that. But uh, please uh, welcome my guest. Uh, introduce yourself to my show and my uh, my people, and we'll have at it. Yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, Mike Famelant here. I'm a Bigfoot researcher from uh, a researcher is uh, what I, I call myself, but there investigator, explorer um, from Northwestern New Jersey, uh, kind of in the armpit between Pennsylvania and New York. So, <laughs> give you a little visualization there. Yeah, um, that's kind of an armpit. I'm from Jersey, so I understand what you're talking about. Yeah, whereabouts? Uh, I was actually from South Jersey, a little town called National Park, right across from the, uh, uh, right at the Delaware River, across from Philadelphia. Oh, very cool. Neat. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, when I was a kid, we heard all about Bigfoot, and we also heard all about the, the Jersey Devil and all Jersey that Devil. stuff. Jersey Devil. There you go. We, we, they they showed us these films in school when I was a kid, like sixth or seventh grade, about Bigfoot, and you see the that one, um, that one they always show of the cowboy guy on his horse walking mm -hmm. around and then you see Bigfoot just come out of nowhere and just kind of look, doesn't even break a stride and keeps yeah. on going, man. And you're like, what was that? <laughs> so, yeah, that's a, the Patterson Gimlin film. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I think that's the most famous thing that, that's out there, isn't it? I would, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just Bigfoot in general. That's, that's probably the most famous, uh, famous uh, Bigfoot piece, that, if you will. Yeah, there. because, well, well, Bigfoot in the, himself or, herself or he he she whatever she is a species uh has many different names as well too for for the different areas that it's in absolutely yeah so um for example in florida there's the grass man uh oh i'm sorry that's ohio ohio's a grass man florida you got the skunk ape um washington uh you have the sasquatch um and that's the same in Canada, and then even overseas, in Australia, the Yowie, the Yeti, and wow. the Himalayas. Um, so every um, country except Antarctica and every continent except Antarctica has a, um, a Bigfoot type creature. Right, and and a name that goes along with it. Exactly. But there, yep. but there are, do you think that all the? Do you think there's an individuality between the different creatures, or do you think it's just one with uh, a bunch of different names? I think it's kind of like humans. I think we're all kind of related at some level. Yeah. Um, so I'd, I, I'd say more so like uh, cousins, if you will. Sure, kind of sure. Like they may, they may uh, be related to each other, but maybe look a little bit different because of, of the uh, environment that they had, they live in. Absolutely, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that's, so my question for you is, So you you tell the story, tell my audience the story of how you got involved with this or what what sparked your interest about it because because I I listened to it already but I know they need to hear it because yeah. uh, it would have probably done the same thing to me 
Yeah, so so I was uh, living in Florida at the time, and I was working at a beach resort, and uh, I was watching TV, and I was watching uh, Finding Bigfoot on TV, and just I was, so happened uh, to be. Yeah, yeah, and and I wasn't into outdoorsy stuff. I was um, a total like inside person, like like video games type of thing. Well, um, from from all your videos I watch, you're pretty outdoorsy now. Well, and that's only solely because of Bigfoot, which is awesome. Right. Um, but uh, so I was watching the show and I went on, on their website and I saw that you can go out with these guys and, and and look for Bigfoot. So I was like, oh, you know, I was, I was engaged at the time. So I was like, hey, let's do this before we get married. This is going to be a real cool little adventure thing. Right. Because if um, you get married, your wife's never going to let you out of the house. Well, that's what I figured. So <laughs> I was. You figured <laughs> right, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, it's a cool thing. I paid a lot of money. So I paid a lot of money to go on this thing. And like, like a lot of money, like hundreds? Like six, like six hundred dollars. Yeah, that's, a lot that's of money. considered a lot of money to me. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and what they don't tell you, it's non refundable. Right. So, uh, nice. me, me, and my my uh, fiance at the time, we broke up. And I moved up to um, to Tampa, and I got a job working on the ambulance for the city of Tampa, which is great. Uh, but I didn't know anybody, and the trip was coming up, and I had two tickets. So I was like, "Crap! How you know what am I going to do? I, I need to bring somebody, and I don't really want to go by myself. You know, right. I have paid three hundred bucks for this ticket. I might as well bring somebody." Um, so I was working with my part, this partner, my my best friend to this day, Jimmy. And, um, we were working on the ambulance. It was like the second time we worked together. So like a total of like 12 hours we worked together and I, I dropped the question to him. I was like, Jimmy, it's going to sound weird, but I got this thing coming up in North Florida. Do you want to look for Bigfoot? Do you want to go, do you want to go with me? And he's like, Oh, I've always wanted to do that. Ah, so, so Jimmy, <laughs> you know, yeah. So Jimmy, Jimmy came, came through. And nothing happened the entire trip, right? So, um, but it was still nothing, trip. It was still cool. It was yeah. awesome. We, but you see, the thing is, we camped away from everybody, and it was cool because I actually just came back from that that spot. It's um, for uh, for my show. We filmed down there in Florida, so and and I was able to go to this spot. So it's really cool. It's it's like it was. Uh, I don't know. It brought back some memories. But um, we camped away from everybody because we thought everybody was going to be kind of weird, right? Well, and, I mean, <laughs> sure, sure. So <clears throat> I think that's why the last night we, so we, we were just sitting by the fire and we were watching a meteor shower, which is pretty cool. Cause that's being, cool. From, being from the city, like in, in, well, living in Tampa, you couldn't see the, the night sky. Right. So, you know, it was a nice little treat and, we're just sitting there talking. We hear a tree knock, which is supposedly a way that Bigfoot uh, communicate. And then we hear a tree knock from the complete opposite direction, maybe a minute or two later. And I'm sitting here thinking, these are these people that put on the show, like because right. we paid money, you know. So they're they're obviously going to try to get their money's worth, and that's how they have people coming back. Yada yada yada. Yeah, like going to a seance, you know. <laughs> well, it's like a show. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's more so like you know, it's an entertainment value. So right. They want to make sure you get your six hundred dollars worth, or exactly. at least close to it, half to it. <clears throat> right, and and I get that. Um, but now now looking back at it, these people would never do anything like that. So so I have to give them credit. Um, but I didn't realize that at the time, you know. Oh, well, I, I mean, it's it's your first time, and and. Uh, it's uh, you just you got a guy who came with you who luckily was interested in it too, and uh, and so and then you don't really know anybody in the area, so you you're not familiar with these people, so of course you got to be a little bit uh, you got to take some second guesses there and go, hmm, I wonder what's going on here, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think anybody would probably do the same thing in that situation. I would. Um, but then then uh like 15 minutes after the tree knock um, or the tree knocks that like a rock got thrown at us. And it was kind of like a little smaller than fist size, but it landed like 10 feet from us or five feet from us, some somewhere in that range. And you could hear it come through the canopy. And I was like, man, 
I got scared, right? So I'm like, these people are getting crazy. Right. These people are crazy. This is right. why these. This is why we stayed away from them because they're crazy. This is now they're actually, actually crazy, crazy. Yeah, they, they throwing are rocks at us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. like delivering. I'm like, oh Absolutely. my god, we're gonna be in deliverance. Where is this the, is the movie? Room? Yeah, where is it? I was waiting for it. But my 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 friend my friend, he was like, uh, well, if you want to go sleep in the car, and before he could even you know get that out of his his mouth, I was I had my tent sleeping bag and I was you know. B line right, the right to the car. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he, he talked some sense to me and was like, Hey Mike, this is, you know, if this is a Bigfoot, like this is what Bigfoot do. This is why we're here. Right. That's what you come, came for. Yeah. Why don't you come out? And so, so he coaxed me out and, um, <laughs> over the you. next, like over the, yeah, over the next like 20 minutes, um, 15 minutes, maybe, uh, like four more of these rocks came crashing through the canopy landing you know within 10 feet from us and i it, with every rock that came i was like man this is probably less and less of a person because like these people either got some big kahunas and they were accurate like, right i was just gonna thing. say they got really good aim and you, you know it's not some 12 year old kid who's just throwing a rock he's gonna hit a tree uh, Right, or it won't be within a ten, like a literally like a diameter, three foot diameter circle. You know, like it that that's that's super impressive. And apparently, so, they can see really good at night. That's the that's the going thing. That's the <laughs> that's the, the red yeah. kind of glow on their eyes, which we can get into later if you'd like. Yeah. But uh, I think that's um, it, uh, it scared scared me enough to where where jimmy was like i think i'm gonna throw a rock back at it and i was like jimmy bad idea sitting, jimmy <laughs> yeah we're sitting here my first time ever in the woods and you know waiting for the banjos here jimmy is throwing a rock back at something that is obviously you know whether it be a person or a bigfoot or something is obviously right. throwing rocks at us yeah, you, you don't want to throw a rock at something else that you're in their domain. Right, right. I mean, and even if it's a person, like, you're going to come out with, like, a, you know, a misdemeanor uh, assault charge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, so it's just a, a lose-lose situation. Uh, but he, he threw a rock back regardless. And um, it was at that point when I, I i knew it wasn't like a person because a, a, a boulder right i call it boulder but um a laptop sized rock uh, same thing came crashing through and landed like 10 feet from us and you know if it's a person in the woods there's no unless they are uh an olympian or something like that there's no way that they're going to pick up this big rock and get it right near you it would be woods. It would be impossible, right. and I agree. and you know, uh, like I said, I was just back there um, not too long ago, and I redid some of the measurements um, that we did that night, and there's no way that it was a person. It's it's 100% outside of human range. So I don't know. That's what got me into it, and then that kind of that got me thinking, and the thinking got me researching, and. That turned into an addiction, and you know, here we are, what, twelve years later, and I'm talking to you on your uh, on your podcast, right? And you're you're here talking to me on the podcast, and you either like to go out and hunt for Bigfoot, or you don't mind being having rocks thrown at you in, in a wilderness. Uh, so, so if if you were able to put that part of it past you to go out and actually research this, then. Uh, yeah, you're you're a better man than me because I would not want to stand in the woods waiting for something to be thrown at me. Because maybe this time it was a rock. Maybe next time it would have been something else, or something else would have some type of attack would have happened. You know, but I think with you, it seems it sounds like you look past all that. Well, with with um, a, a lot of Bigfoot encounters um, like that, with rock throwing and with close encounters, they. Um, <clears throat> witnesses always say that if bigfoot wanted to hurt me they could have right and right. and i think those rocks if they wanted to especially that last one if they wanted to take me out with that with that boulder thing 
than they totally easily could have. You think it was I just think, a warning or say, yeah, or absolutely. Just to say, hey, I'm here. And I think it was because that we were camped away from everybody. We were right. closer to their, like you said before, domain. I say like their, their family unit. Yeah. And, this and, is my house. Right, right. And if you're in my house, I'm going to be pissed off and try to get yeah. you out of there. Yeah, get you out of my backyard. Hell yeah. But I think they have the intelligence to realize that they shouldn't hurt. And they, if they hurt a human, then the humans are going to come looking. Because you would, I would think in my own mind, if I'm Bigfoot and I'm seeing, and I'm looking down through the woods and I see a guy standing there, I would think to myself, man, he looks a lot like me. He's, he's shaped like me. He's tall like me or short like me, kind of just looks like me, minus all the, maybe the hair. I'm not sure what they exactly look like. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, I would think as, as, a, as a being of some sort, he wouldn't want to hurt someone else unless he's hunting for something, you know? Yeah, yeah, and I don't think they hunt humans. There's no, there's no recorded uh, uh, Bigfoot attack ever. ever right, I was going to ask that. Are, are there yeah. any attacks? Of, you don't hear about that. You, know? like, you hear some, about like, sightings, right? But you don't some, hear about somebody getting attacked, attacked, you know? There's some third-hand stories, and I think they're more folklore than they are uh, of witness sightings. But um, no, there's, there's none that are. Um, but you're right, there are a lot more sightings um than anything else and with uh like seeing like i was looking on your youtube channel uh uh in the shadow of uh big red eye i mean is that something is that something it's it's very common with them do you that you would know that they all do they all have red eyes or do you think they have different colors and maybe you're just coming across the ones with red eyes yeah it seems to be if if it is reported um uh, uh that the bigfoot do have some sort of um reflecting eyes then it right. usually is red right. um there have been other ones i've seen blue eyes that i think is from a bigfoot next to a pair of red eyes which is really cool um but yeah i think red's the overall thing and and that's the name of my show big red eye that's kind of uh northwestern new jersey's um Bigfoot, we were talking about different names before. Right, and, and they're and, different environments, and maybe that just has something to do with their how they evolved in their environment. That could be too, absolutely. So um, so you say you've seen one with a, with blue eyes next to one with a with a red. So have you do you when you saw that, do you absolutely did you think to yourself, there he is? That's Bigfoot. I was so scared at the time. <laughs> I didn't. I would be too, I, Mike. I'm just asking. I, I, couldn't, <laughs> I I didn't realize. I still don't know what it what it was, but I I know what it wasn't. Because you so, probably weren't standing there for 20 minutes, going, eh, let me look at his legs and see if it's the right type of leg. Yeah, You're probably just no. going, oh shit. I think it's it was <laughs> it was pitch black in the middle of the night and in the middle of the green swamp in Florida and we weren't sticking around to see what that thing was. Let me tell you, we we saw the <laughs> yeah, it was cool. We were just walking down the trail. I was doing Bigfoot vocalizations and uh, the spotlight caught this this red reflecting thing. I thought it was like a nail in a tree from a hunter. Sure, um, but it was too big, and there were two of them. And then well, all of a sudden, two nails. yeah, well, two nails next to it. And there were no trees. It was a, it was, it was right. next to a palmetto bush. I mean, if you had two nails in one tree, there would, a, another tree would have to be right directly grown. Next yeah. To it. And you would see happen, it. You know? I mean, and, and you would see the tree there. There was no tree. Right. Um, and then, uh, did you it, see it, form it, to it? No, nothing. Just the eyes. Oh. And then a, a second later, um, the, the second pair opened his eyes oh, sure. opened it was, his eyes and turned around and there it was and it was light blue and we sat there looking at it and we were saying hey you know uh we we were like brand new to bigfooting and didn't realize that humans didn't have eye shine so we were we were oh. thinking it was like a poacher 
but sure. uh, and we were saying, hey, sorry, we're gonna get out of here. Didn't mean to interrupt you, whatever. And um, then the one, the red eyes turned and looked at like the blue eyes because you could see like one disappear and right. it turned back and then it blinked and then we were out of there. So so basically one Bigfoot turned around to the other one and said, what did he say? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Per- and just turned right back around. But they and- knew, I would have to imagine they knew that you were trying to communicate with them or just communicating with them. Well, yeah, and I think they knew that they were caught. I think right. they were coming in and and checking us out because we were doing those vocalizations. I think they're very uh, inquisitive creatures. Sure. So I think they 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 will come in and check you out. So I think by doing these vocalizations, we I said something that must have set them off and was like, well, let me go check that out. Right. And when when they did, boom, our spotlight caught them. And like I like it was right on the yes, if I could see any form, and it was, it was they were far enough away that we couldn't see that the light didn't project that far, but you right. could see the reflection of their eyes. You know, like right. a street sign, you can't see the post, sure. but you could see the see the eyes. That's so you exactly. you couldn't exactly make out like how tall they were or anything, but you well, were you, <clears throat> you did get something from it. What's cool is uh, so I was with Jimmy again, poor Jimmy. Uh, he, he, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy's still around. He is. Yeah. I, oh, that's I just, good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, but you know what? I, like back in, when I was younger, like in my forties, after I got divorced first time, uh, only one time, uh, when I would go on dates with women or something like that, you could pretty much, you could figure somebody out and within 15 minutes, you know, you, you could find out if they were okay to be around or this chick is back crazy, but, uh, <laughs> but you could also, but also, as you said, you know, you did a couple of shifts with uh, with Jimmy and, you know, adds up to about 12 hours. When you're sitting in a, in a vehicle with one person, you're going to start talking and you're going to know whether what this this person's disposition is like, what their sense of humor is like. You're going to find these things out. So I think maybe just from that, you that's maybe that's why you felt comfortable saying, hey, Jimmy, you want to go on this thing with me? But uh, but uh, and that's that's like. I I knew his personality is very right. similar to mine, so but I was new, so I was quiet, you sure. know. But I knew like as soon as like I knew like we were gonna be good friends. Like I knew that that first shift, like oh yeah, the, man, the, this guy's, uh, this guy's cool. All, I'm glad I, he's my I'm, partner. And I don't want to say it in this way, but I mean, but it's almost like because of the business I'm in, uh, uh, people always ask me because I'm I'm a medium about. Uh, soulmates and stuff like that soulmates aren't always somebody you're going to fall in love with someone it's just someone you click with that's all and jimmy sure. just happened to be someone you just like instant friends clicked with yeah i've had that situation i have a buddy who i who i used to ride motorcycles with back in delaware and uh i met up with him one time and we were buddies uh where we became best friends for 17 years and you just Absolutely. do so uh and you just there are some people in this world you click with and there's just some people who are just like just kind of uh, acquaintances, but and this just happened to there, because nothing in my business. There's no such thing as coincidence. There's no. It didn't just happen. It happened for a reason. And now you made a, a a friend out of this who you both like doing the same things together. So you never have to ask anybody else. You just turn around and go, Hey Jimmy, come on, it's time to go. Let's go. That's true, right? You know, and and he got into. Um bush bushcraft stuff and woodworking and he was never an outdoor person either i mean he was like a water person but never you know a woods person and from that i got into survival stuff and fishing and and um stuff like that so bigfooting isn't just for me about bigfooting it it, it it's brought a whole it's the whole aspect of of the, the world to my life really yeah yeah absolutely it, it added to your life and and added in a in a big way a big a really big experience way you know i mean you, there are some people who could just walk out in the woods and go oh i was out hunting bigfoot or there's some other people who are looking for the evidence you know looking for you know the broken br- branches and and the and the footprints and and the hair hanging off the uh off the uh tree limbs and stuff like that someone who's really going to get into it as it should be, because it should, this is, I don't think it's something, 
that it should just be for uh, amateurs or for, I mean, everybody starts out as an amateur, but some people stay amateur status, whereas other people are really get into it for more than just wanting to see him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, but I think you need everybody. Everybody plays an important role when it oh, comes absolutely. to researchers. Yeah, uh, and comes to researching this this thing. I mean, without without your amateur researchers, you wouldn't have these. Uh, you know, your, I'm just saying your... some of them stay amateur, where other people just get into it really, and then become like we said, researchers. You know. Yeah, yeah. I think there's different classifications. You have your armchair researchers, people that like to watch <laughs> yeah. videos and and do that, and then. You have your people that this is a weekend hobby, and then you have the rare people like me that have turned this into like this is my full time job, right? Which is it's it's incredible. I never thought I could say I'm you know Bigfoot researching is 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 my my job, but um, it's cool that you know I've been able to do that. And you've been able to do it, especially like like I said on uh, on YouTube as well. I mean. You got a hell of a bunch of YouTube videos on there, you know, and you're always yeah. constantly updating all the time and constantly updating your your audience as well with everything. So that's not somebody who's doing this for a hobby. No, we've actually I just posted uh, video number one hundred today. Wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I saw it and I was like, oh, um, and it was actually just an update to tell everybody that our season five. Uh, release is coming up uh, at February 20th. So that's a really cool thing, too. I saw you have another show, too. Um, as you describe it, it's, it's Bigfoot 101. You call it uh, Squatchables. Squatchables. So yes. uh, I, I I like the names of your shows. I mean, did you did you sit around <laughs> for a long time and go, man, what do I call this show? Or did you just go, hmm, Squatchables. Okay, done. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think uh, In the Shadow took me a long time to come up with because it, it, it is, I wanted it to stand out. Um, sure, you don't want it to look like somebody else's show. Right, all. right. Um, and, and Squatchables, man, I think I, I got to give it I got to give it to a, a Lunchables commercial. I must have been watching a commercial. At the Lunchables. Oh, Lunchables. And then, boom, there it is. We have it. Uh, the, the, the little packs with the cheese and the ham and all that stuff. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, Lunchables, if you're listening, you yeah. can send me. Send him a check. Free, send me <laughs> some free Lunchables there. Yeah, absolutely. Happy yeah. with that. The pizza ones, please. Uh, the pizza ones. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. Well, you got to go. You got to go with your favorite flavor. You know, you don't want to eat the one that's just got ham and cheese in it. You know, who wants to do that? <laughs> but uh, so, so. Is that also a separate entity on its own? Do you have a? Do you have a? Is that a uh, a separate channel somewhere, or is that is that video somewhere else? No, that um, we turned that into a DVD. Oh no, um, kidding. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All, all of my episodes are on DVD too. Um, oh my uh, goodness. But, yeah, yeah. The Squatchables one is pretty cool because we. Um, we put them all uh, online, and then and then we took a couple off just uh, because we do want to sell some DVDs and stuff. And do you and... do you have a dedicated website for that as well? No, nope. Uh, if anybody wanted to mess or order anything that I that I'm selling, they could do it through um, my Facebook account. Oh, okay. Well, that's page. pretty much the same thing. Yeah, yeah, same same thing. Or um, yeah, shoot me an email, but we can go over that stuff at the very end. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. Uh... So, how many uh, how many episodes or how many DVDs do you have of uh, Squatchables? Uh, I think uh, of Squatchables, we have uh, just one season we did, and I don't know about doing another season. I think I have eleven episodes on there. Really? They're, wow. They're they're short little 10, 20 minute uh, tidbit things, and it's um it's just enough to to we go over some of the basic stuff like um need to know. To, I need to know how to get into like the woods if you've never been hiking. We go over like principles of hiking and stuff like that, and then we get more into um, Bigfoot research techniques, and then uh, some evidence collection, uh, track casting, all the good stuff you need to know about Bigfoot. Right. So all all the little tidbits, telling people like uh, showing them what to look out for, especially if you're taking. Uh, 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 plaster uh, imprints of feet, other of, of the uh, tracks, all that type of stuff, or is it something different? 
Yeah, absolutely. We have an episode dedicated to track casting, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I, well, I saw some one of your episodes on YouTube with the uh, the the the, uh, the big red eye, and you guys were squirting down the uh, the uh, plaster, and I was like, uh, I was like, oh, I did because when when I saw the the part before that when it showed the footprint, I was like, I would have never picked that up. So so you give yeah. everybody the insight on what to look for, uh, especially with uh, squatchables. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And, and if you're, you know, I, I, I say it's like a, a intro to Bigfooting, but even if you've been, you know, a seasoned researcher, uh, you could definitely learn some new, new techniques and stuff like that. So it's not just for, you know, it's, it's designed. My whole point be, behind making in the shadow of Big Crit Eye and squatchables is to get people outside and into nature more sure because we need so, to because we need to we need because man I, I don't know about you but I, i'm sure you're on the same page with me we're screwing this place up <laughs> well, you know we have all I these billionaires say. who are taking joy rides up into space to go to a dead planet yet we have this beautiful planet right here that we could be taking care of but we don't and uh and there's not enough people who get out into the woods or get out into that type of environment to see how beautiful this place really is, and we're just taking advantage of it right now, and then and we're destroying it. And I and I wish they would just stop because because we don't have any other place to go. No, why are we and why are we going to a dead planet out in space, uh, Mike? I don't know because you know it's dead. So we got a great place here. Why don't we just take care of this one? You know, but I don't get it. I, I just don't get it sometimes. Yeah, no, and and if if we can get more people outside to see it, maybe that's the first step in making Taking a change. Taking care of it, yeah. So so hopefully, you know, um, every every um, that's that's I, I have that as like an underlying theme in all my shows. Sure. Um, but that's that's I think the main thing really is to do, get outside. Do you do something explore. underlining to the point where like if you're making a campfire when you're done your campfire, this is how you put it out. So you make sure that nothing's going to happen afterwards, anything like that. I haven't done that yet, but that's a very good, uh, very good suggestion. I know I'm going to have to add you to the credits on that one. <laughs> Don't do that. Just do me a favor and just teach it. That's all. That's all. I yeah. Need. Yeah. 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 So, um, so with, with, so you you believe that with the DVD with Squatchables and you got eleven episodes on it, you believe you think uh, or you believe that you've covered enough on there to get somebody started in the in in the process of going out to to do not only maybe just hunting for for or looking for Bigfoot but in other fashions as well as getting out there and doing the camping and all that. Absolutely, absolutely, hundred percent. Good, good. That, that's that's. Because that's what we need. Because we need we need people who are, you know, when you watch the TV shows, they just kind of they're all of a sudden they're in the middle of the woods, and then all of a sudden they're out of the woods, and they don't really, you know, they don't show the camping part of it. They don't show the prep work that goes into it. Because because the prep work is more than I I could probably ever imagine. Uh, Astronomical. <laughs> right, because because you're you're not just camping. You're setting up uh, your place where you're going to eat. You're setting up for your place where if you're out in the woods for five or six days, you're going to the bathroom somewhere. So, <clears throat> um, so give us an idea of what it takes to do all that. Oh man, well, <laughs> that's that's a loaded question. Um, so from from start to finish, I mean, planning an expedition really. Um, a lot of people ask where, like, like, how do I pick a spot for an expedition? Cause right, because you just came back from an expedition, correct? Yeah, yeah, I was just in Florida for like a week and a half, so that was, that so, was really so awesome. So, give us a, a rough estimate of what it was like to put all that together. Um, well, that's that's a bad example because for the Florida trip, I didn't plan at all. Uh, okay, so, I just kind of went down there and did my own thing. Well, oh, so, so you were with a were you you were with a group when you went down there? No, no, I was just by myself. Oh, so you just, but you put, you, you put, you know exactly what you're going to do to get yourself down there, correct? Yeah, yeah. For a better example would be um, like if I was going up to, say, Vermont or something like that, 
where we would have uh, witnesses that we'd have to plan for um, and find. We do that through social media. Um, and then uh, we have to find camping locations. That's that's a big thing. We can't camp where it's illegal. Right. But we also want to camp where it's um, squatchy. Uh, generally speaking, we don't camp in campgrounds. We, we go to like um, uh, middle of the woods, no bathroom, no running water. Right, there. because at a campground, I mean, if a, a Bigfoot is out there, they're not going to go hang around campgrounds because they don't want to be around all those people. They're going to be yeah. out in the middle of nowhere. And so you got a plan to be out in the middle of nowhere. And so, like, since you're out in the middle of nowhere, um, here's a, a kind of a, a prepper question for you because uh, we're into prepping here. Um, so you're out in the middle of nowhere. You're in the middle of somewhere in Florida. You don't know what animals are around, or do you research the animals that are that are possibly around you? Do you take something with you that is some type of uh, uh, more or less forceful weapon in case you want to? You need to protect yourself. Yeah, well, uh, you have to do your due diligence when when you go anywhere. Um, uh, Florida, for example, has a very uh, has a plethora of animals that can hurt you. Right. Um, so you have to you have to know and prepare for that before you went down there. For example, Florida has panthers, and whenever I go down to Florida, I deploy my anti panther hat, which is just a, a beanie, but it has um, eyes that are um, like fabric eyes that are sewn onto it, and you wear okay. the eyes you wear the eyes in the back uh, because panthers attack from behind. Right. So right. It, so as long it, as you're having the eyes in the front and back. It's always going to see something. Exactly. That's going to lessen your chances of getting attacked. So I, I, uh, I love kitty cats, but I don't want no panther attacking <laughs> no, my yeah. ass. No right. way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, I used to carry bear spray when you when you ask about uh, defense mechanisms. I used to carry sure. bear, bear spray um, until I bear sprayed myself. And then I don't carry it anymore. <laughs> yeah. I, I worked in prison for six years. And, and the... Uh, the, uh, they call it, the stuff they use in there was nothing like you could buy on the streets and they could be uh, 150, 200 feet away and they spray it down there and then it permeates all the way up the hallway and everybody's choking. And when that stuff was, it was so thick, when that stuff would hit the floor, it would, it's so thick, it would look like red chocolate. It was oh, just, geez. Yeah. So you, wow. you got that on you. If you got sprayed with that stuff, this, this uh, it's worse than anything I've ever seen. Yeah, you, the the badass that you thought you were, you are no longer <laughs> at that point. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good stuff. But yeah, but, but uh, yeah, if you spray yourself, then that would deter that would deter deter me. But but would it? Because you know you got to protect yourself somehow. Well, it was an accidental spray. Sure. So, um, I wouldn't think you want to go. Hey, let's party, everybody! Squirt. Yeah. You know? <laughs> no. My younger days, I might, I may have been a, may have been a different story, but um, <laughs> Try yeah, no, I, 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 to be honest, um, where, where I am, even, even in Sussex County, New Jersey, uh, where we have a super high density of black bear population, um, I don't feel, I've, I've never had the need to unholster it. Okay. So I, I, I just assume that if I never used it, I don't need it. Right. Um, I, not to say that I probably shouldn't use it, and that's just for for protection against people too. You know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but I, I do carry um, knives, so that's that's my main form of protection. But right. again, I've never, you know, I used to carry a machete. I, I I took that out one time. That would do it. And and that was when we saw the eyes. The night we saw the eyes, I took it out. Um, when you saw but, the uh, eyes and you had the machete, did you think? Man, I'm glad I brought that freaking machete. <laughs> I did. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I was, I was happy I brought it at that time. But yeah, uh, yeah sure. Um, yeah. but I'm a big, I'm a big thing of um, you know, lightening my load. And if I don't use a piece of equipment, then I'm not gonna keep carrying it. Right, right, absolutely. I mean, but there is that there's always that chance. I mean, it's as uh preppers would say or gun owners would say, it's better to have it and not need it than need yeah. it and not have it, you know. And I I'm I'm a solid fan of that too. Um but 
I don't, I don't know when it comes to when it comes to hiking i'm usually with somebody there, there's a whole right. lot of other stuff i'm I, you know sure. I'm, uh, that goes goes into it my safety is always number one uh, when yes, it comes absolutely. to expeditions has to be yeah. has to be for for not only myself but for my team and everybody else that we go out with right right and and with uh i mean whichever way you're going to protect yourself you want to make sure that everybody else is aware that you have that uh with you in order to protect yourself so nobody gets in the way or something like that you know absolutely yeah and like i said i don't carry bear mace but every everybody else in my team does <laughs> so <laughs> so when they see something you're just running the other way like a, i'll like, be behind like, yeah i'll like be the smart behind guy. yeah <laughs> yeah 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 stand behind somebody yeah let them do it yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely so um you you just mentioned that you have a team so do you actually have a, a full team of people that go out with you on these expeditions beyond this one that you just took? Yeah. Um, normally, I'd like to have uh, anywhere from four to six people come out with me. I have sure. um, uh, a local team here of about 30 people within the tri-state area. Oh, so York, you can New choose Jersey. from whoever you want to bring with you at the, at Not, the moment. Not necessarily. It's more like pulling teeth to get people to come to expeditions. Yeah, because I understand that. Unfortunately, yeah. you know, like I said, I not not everybody has the luxury of being a Bigfoot researcher. So work right. and, and stuff come comes first, and family, obviously. So I don't have you know much any family, and I don't well, you know this is my job, so it's easy for me to get away. So um, with this trip that you just took, was that an intentional you going out by yourself, or you just couldn't get anybody else to go. Yeah, that was an intentional one. Uh, I do that sometimes too when I just want to. Um, I, I use big footing too as like a therapeutic therapy to get sure. away. Sure, absolutely. Thing. Yeah. So, so that was that was a week and a half of therapy for yeah, me. It's it's, it's a working getaway needed. more or less. Absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. Now, did did you come back from that expedition with some uh, some type of evidence or anything at all? Um, no, I'm not going to say anything. Because, oh, because I don't want to ruin your show, man. Sorry. Well, no, it's <laughs> it's not that. not only that. If if I had something, I probably wouldn't tell you anyway. But I, uh, to be honest, I haven't went over the um, audio recorders or any of the um, video. Oh, so you still got to go back over all the tape and all that stuff just to see what you can hear. Yeah, yeah. We have um, usually forty hours of audio to go over uh, each expedition. So I, I would imagine, since you said you've been doing this for 12 years, when you go over that audio, you know what's the difference between uh, something that you've not normally heard, or maybe you heard uh, a Sasquatch and or, say, a wolf or something like that. Absolutely. There's key indicators for um, Bigfoot vocalizations. So um, what you do is, or what I do is um, I put the audio up on a spectrogram so I can actually see audio waves right? and um, I can identify those key characteristics that would, would decipher it from say a coyote or a person. And so you're going to you, know it right away. Yeah. Once you, once you, you know, you do this for a long enough time, you'll be able to run through audio. Like I said, 40 hours of audio, I can get through in maybe two hours on a computer. Oh, so you um, could just put, so you just run it through, run it through your computer and go, hmm, Bigfoot, hmm, not. Nah. And then it's yeah. just, you just know yep. it right away. Exactly. Yep. Because I'm sure you've heard by now, after 12 years, like, like living with someone, you get to know their, uh, their, um, er, er, their every er, idiosyncrasy, everything about them, and you're able to pick up on it and know it right away, like, Oh, well, okay. That's big. Well, I think that's that's kind of the key the key of research is is and how we're going to find these creatures is by getting to know them extremely personally. Right, right. Right now, let me ask you this: Have you ever have you ever been somewhere where you know that, like by hearing the sounds, that it's that it's one particular uh bigfoot that you've heard before or you you like do you give any of them in it like uh mark down this is uh speed, this is number one this is number two i keep <laughs> are they frequent frequent ones um do you, that you hear on a 
on a pretty frequent basis and you know exactly which one it is. Yeah, no, you can't. Uh, unfortunately, uh, vocalizations are pretty rare and un, um, not common to come by. Right. So you um, can't really classify it that way. However, um, I can, and this is going to sound strange, especially to your listeners, and I totally get that. But, uh, I'm um, a spirit medium, and I see ghosts all day long. Nothing is strange <laughs> to me. Go right ahead. Well, I've, I've done a lot of research in New Jersey, and uh, I can tell uh, they have a nomadic movement of every third year uh, try, uh, counterclockwise around the state. So I and oh, so and, they're moving uh, to different areas at particular times in the year. Is what you're saying? No, no, they're moving based on food. Whenever they deplete a food source in their area, oh, okay, well, they, sure. it's just like like ancient humans did, like uh, like na ancient Native Americans. They they were hunters and gatherers. Once they right. depleted the food source in the area, they would move to somewhere else. I think that's exactly what they could do. And in New Jersey, it's cool because every third year the sightings in that area increased by 80%. So, so do you think that means there's, there, they are, uh, there's just more of them or, or they're reproducing more? No, I think, I think that means that the, that family that I think they're, they're in family groups. Sure. And, and for example, down the Pine Barrens, we found footprints every year. Um, and they, they started off as like six inch footprints. And every year they would grow and grow and grow. And they were in the same so area. So you know they're getting year. bigger. And they're not just like something that's here for a little while then dies off. Exactly. Yeah, I think, like I said, I think there's a family group. And I think with, because of those foot, I can tell that there's three Bigfoots in one family group. And there's five Bigfoots in another family group. And because of the sightings and the witness statements, I could tell that one family group has red color hair and then the other family group has black color hair. Right. That's pretty cool. I mean, you that can't is make pretty that cool. stuff that's, up. I mean, you, you know, and then that, that's how you know it's a family and not just a random thing. And that's how you know it's not a hoax and there's something to it. Right. Because who's going to put that many Nobody. Put suits together to do yeah. that? just out in the middle of woods somewhere, hoping that you're going to freaking show up. Well, that's the thing. And people no don't know, people don't know where we go. I don't advertise where we go prior right. to going there. And for somebody to, in, in fact, the last time I was down there, I didn't find any prints, but the last time I was down there, I made sure I even went down there before my team. They didn't even know I was going down there just to, I trust my team hundred percent, but I just wanted for myself. Right. Unfortunately, you didn't find any tracks, but, um, you know, you have to do your due diligence just to make sure that, you know, but I can't, I don't have no explanation for how those tracks are getting bigger here. And, or the only, uh, the only other thing it would be is you got some real crazy stalker out there. Right. To, Which, and I don't think that's the case ever, you know, I, I, have that would be had, crazy. I've had stalkers, not going to lie. Um, however, uh, they're crazy ex-girlfriends, so I'm not thinking that they're going to be different, like, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't I've think had they're going to be. No fun. Yeah. <laughs> thousand, not gonna be... thousand messages on my phone, you know? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I don't think that has any us. Bigfoot related, uh, no. there. they're, they're just crazy <laughs> bitches. That's all. But, uh, <laughs> do you know why they're crazy bitches? Cause they're just crazy bitches. That's all. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, that's just the way it is. So. So when you go out on this, when you go out on this expedition, do you have, do you just go open-minded, open-hearted, just whatever happens, happens? Or is, like I said, is there something that's happening all the time that has some type of consistency to it? Well, we're, we're, it, it's, it's both, which is, it's hard to do, um, because you're excited I, I, about it going, right? Well, yeah, yeah. It's 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 going. It's experiencing something. It's um, it's having all that prep work come together, which yeah. is awesome. Uh, and you want to enjoy it, and you obviously want to have a fun and relaxing time. I call it vacation when I go out on these expeditions because I go to places that I want to visit that I I've, I've always wanted to see. Sure. You know, I don't. You know. um, you're making it part of the expedition, so. But at the same time, we have to film a show. 
and right. we have to stay on schedule and we have to right. we have interviews and witnesses and like you said we got to you know we're going to eat here at this time and then we got to be in the field at this time and there's there's a as much as you want it to be laid back and easy going um there's a lot of uh behind the scenes behind the scenes stuff that sure, nobody absolutely. really realizes uh goes on yeah I, when i was young i used to play in a band and we would you know we would be at the bar and there's all this prep work that you have to do to learn the music and and bring the equipment in and all that stuff. But people who come to the bar just think a band magically appears. No, <laughs> right. it, it, it doesn't work that way. And then they leave the bar and then you're packing up all your crap and then going home and then and then you got to unload it and then you you would get home and it's five six o'clock in the morning. So that people don't see that part of it. Is that what you try to bring with your uh, with with your on your YouTube channel? No, I don't try to bring it. I think it's just an aspect of the show. Like, I think people will see the struggles that a normal sure. um, uh, Bigfoot investigation would go through. A perfect example would be like um, in Whitehall, New York, we had a lightning storm and a, and a hail storm come through. And that's all, you know, filmed and in the show because that's something that actually happened, you know. Sure, absolutely. It, it, um, you know, other other shows on TV that wouldn't be you wouldn't see anything like that and like you know? like i'm sure like with with same thing with different animals like deer and bear and stuff like that it would, you know these these beings these creatures are intelligent enough to go oh shit hey honey i think it's about to hail we're not going yeah. out tonight you know right. and then you and you're just out there trying to find it and they're smarter and going uh, oh look at that there's a bunch of people with a bunch of cameras out there we're not going over there because it's hailing, you know, because, yeah. but you're still out there doing it. You know, you're not going to stop doing it just because, you know, a lightning storm happened or hail happened, correct? Well, yeah. I mean, it's the point of being out there. It's the experience about being out there right. that, that makes the trip. It's not, it, it, I, it, it doesn't mean anything if I don't find a Bigfoot. Right. You're, I, you're I don't still care. Going. I don't care if I, I never find a Bigfoot. That means absolutely nothing to me. Obviously I would like to. Sure. But it's the it's the journey of getting there that's the that's what what is addicting to me, and what I like the most about it. I have a question for you within that. Now, as as we've talked about earlier on about like uh, the crappy TV shows and some of these crappy depictions. I mean, in my honest opinion, you know, Bigfoot is not Harry and the fucking Hendersons. He's just mm -hmm. not, you know, and as I said earlier, he, he is the OG off grid guy. I mean, you can't, you just happen to come across him. You know, he's not looking for you. He's out there living his life. That's what he's doing. But so since he's out there living his life in the way that you are doing things, you're out there, you're out there exploring, you're out there investigating, looking at everything, trying to gather, gather the evidence and stuff like that. My question to you is, so say the government or whoever is out there doing this as well, and they find one, what do you think is going to happen after that? The, the government, and now, now we're getting into conspiracy theories, which I don't get into. Well, um, not conspiracy theory, but I, I'm saying, in my opinion, I think, I, th I think he's a a, a living, breathing uh, being who is just living his life and wants to continue living his life. Should we be out there hunting one of these mm -hmm. and and then bringing them back and doing a bunch of freaking tissue samples on trying to find out what makes Bigfoot tick? Or should we just like observe him? Because I don't think Bigfoot should be in a freaking zoo. He should he has the right to live his life like we want to be able to do. But we do want to go out there and know what's out there in the world in case we do come across this. But should should he be experimented on? Well, I think that in order to classify and to know what's out there, you need to, the science needs to have a body. Right. And there are, there are people that you would consider Bigfoot hunters that go right. out there and and are their their purpose is to find a Fetch bigfoot one. to kill a bigfoot 
yeah. and to get it into science, which is unfortunately the only way that, that that's going to happen. Now, for me, I want to know what threw rocks at me in right. Florida. That's why I got into it. So for me, when I find that out, that is going to be where I am okay and content with being. Sure. I don't know if I'm going to go further than that. Some people need to have that. Some people's end game or, or whatever reason they got into it is to prove that these things exist. For me, I sure. just want to know what threw rocks at me. I don't need to prove anything to anybody. No, absolutely not. But I some mean, people there's, want there's, there's too much evidence out there already that, you know, this thing's real. It, it, well, it can't not be real, you know? You take the thousands of witness accounts and, and the footprints and the hair samples and and everything else that comes along with it, and and it's it's it, it would be it would surprise me more if they didn't exist. Right. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. And because there's just there's just too much out there. I mean, when I first saw that film in school of that that cowboy on the on the back of that horse, and and then he he just walked out from the woods. And didn't even break stride and just turned around and like was like, eh, okay. And then he would turn around again and go, eh, I'm, I'm just checking you out, but you don't really bother me. I'm just going on about my day and never, you know, didn't go. All of Mike's episodes and more can be found on his YouTube channel, Sussex County Bigfoot. In the Shadow of Big Red Eye is also on Facebook with the same name and Instagram at Shadow of Red Eye. This has been a production of Beyond the Veil. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Beyond the Veil with Daniel Jackson.